Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. I appreciate you joining us. You've caught me out on Jackson Lake State Park here in Colorado, Northeast Colorado. We're fishing for walleyes and saw guys. We're going straight finesse fishing today. Some of my favorite stuff, lots of gulp, hopefully lots of walleyes and lots of saw guys, maybe even a little cooking. So stay tuned, get comfortable. This ought to be fun. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Well, we're expecting we need to be out of here by about two o'clock at the latest, and we're just put the boat in the water, and it's going on 10 right now. So quick business today. We're fishing through the middle of the day. We feel like that that'll be okay uh, as long as we get around where shad are, are around. And there's lots of shad in this lake. It's a shad-based lake. I've only been here one other time, so I really don't know much about what we're getting into. I expect that they're gonna be sitting down tight to the sand. I got one report from one friend that said the bite was doing doing pretty good here. No, that was a clean miss, a definite bite. Uh, said that the bite was going really good. So we're gonna see what happens. As with anything else, timing a bite like this um, can be tricky. That's the second cast with the Pro Swim Shad. Uh, and so far I have made, and there you go, that's what we're looking for right there, guys. We'll go ahead and net him, make things easy on ourselves. And they should get a lot bigger than that. But that's my Second cast with the Pro Swim Shad right there. And I uh, rotated through a couple different baits first thing. Uh, just trying to figure out which one would get us bit. We're not sure if it's a location or whatever. And there you go, there is a perfect one to get us started first thing here in the morning. We're gonna put him back. We'll hope for some bigger ones than that. They've gotta be 15 inches in here to keep, uh, you can't keep any, or you can keep one over 21 inches. But uh, here's a little bait. I've got it on a 3 16 ounce jig head and uh, that little pro swim shad and I'm just swimming it along. It's very easy retrieve. Oh, buddy. And he jumped. The fish jumped after he bit. That's unbelievable. Uh, but that retrieve has worked for us for a lot of fish, a lot of different species of fish over the years. And we learned it from Bernie Key for catching lake trout. You can see the rings where that fish jumped after I hooked him. I've never seen a saw guy jump before. Uh, that was about the same size as the one we just caught. There's one right there, got that one on the first drop. And that feels like a better one right there, guys. I'm not really sure, and I've got him on my absolute favorite rod. He might not be any better than the other ones. No, he's not, but that's okay, we'll take him. They are fired up this morning, that's for sure. Come here, buddy. Now, and I know that we should be able to wade through tons of these. Look at the body conditioning on that. Look how fat that little saw guy is. Come out of there. Look how fat the belly on that guy is. See if we can get him turned. That's a fat little fish right there, guys. And obviously we're looking for bigger ones than that. But that little swim shad, I found the right bait. I rotated through a gulp minnow, a ripple shad, a jigging, gulp jigging grub, and uh, I guess that's it. And then the pro shad and already got bit. So that's a good sign, guys. We've been fishing the boat ramps right there. We're 50 yards down the bank from where we started. This lake is very famous for its carp population. There's wipers in here as well. It's a lake that gets extreme heavy fishing pressure. Just for the record, we're here on a Wednesday, and as you can see, the campground's full, or not full, but busy. Uh, it's a very productive lake, though. Colorado Parks and Wildlife has done a great job with this lake in terms of keeping it um, very fishable, despite the fact that the, that the um, fishing pressure is tremendous, the water level fluctuations are huge, and yet they've still managed to keep plenty of fish in here. <laughs> That's funny, guys. That one bit right at the boat. Right as I go to pick the bait up out of the water, he got it right here at the boat. So now we've been bit on the pro shad and the flicker shad. So a hard bait and a soft bait. Uh, in both cases, the bait's ticking just right at the bottom. This one, I sped it up. When I went to wind it to the boat, he grabbed it. So again, we're still looking for bigger ones than that, but that's a good sign. Um, there's the little Flicker shad right there, guys. It's a, in the pro color, uh, real hot color, so hopefully the fish can see it. Now, he bit it right out here at the boat, so we've been bit in as shallow as a couple of feet, and, uh, and then all the way out here as deep as five feet, so we'll keep playing with our depth ranges. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by 
Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. <laughs> there you go. Now that one's really little. Holy schmoly, geez. No wonder that was a subtle bite. Uh, that's for sure the smallest one I've ever seen. <laughs> he'd look good in my fish tank, wouldn't he? Highly illegal, but man, he'd look cool in there. That's funny, guys. We uh, That one, I literally, I'm doing what I call the burning retrieve, and it just barely ticked it. And I was like, oh, there's a real subtle bite. Well, I wonder why. It was a real subtle fish. The burning retrieve, I'm doing a tip down right now, and we call it the burning, but it's just a quick wind and then kill. And the bait just pendulums towards you, and your rod tip never really moves. And that way, you're always in the right position to detect what's going on and feel what's going on. And I watch the line. As soon as the line goes slack, I know the bait's hit the bottom again. And so it keeps me in constant contact with the bottom. That fish right there, a little tiny fish, but you still give a good clean bite or a good clear feel on the bite. Real subtle, but you get a clear feel on the bite. And a lot, a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is the most sensitive rod ever produced, in my opinion. This is probably the best spinning rod ever produced, in my opinion, from any manufacturer. This is St. Croix's Legend Elite. It's a 2016 model. Um, six foot ten, medium light, extra fast action rod. It is an unbelievable fishing rod. Weighs next, this whole combo right here. It weighs 10 ounces, including the line and the jig head. It's an unbelievably lightweight and effective combo. Uh, extremely powerful, yet extremely finesse oriented. It's a fantastic fishing rod. And uh, with the Revo MGX right here, the Abu Garcia Revo MGX, uh, is for my money, that you can't buy better tackle than this. This is as good as tackle gets uh, as far as spinning rods. It's got six pound Trilane 100% fluorocarbon XL on it, which is the extra limp version, which is made specifically for spinning rods. It handles great. And you gotta get hook set power with it if you need it, just in case. <laughs> Maybe this one's a little bit better here. Yeah, definitely this one's better. I don't know if he's gonna make us uh, make it for the dinner well, but he might. Now this is a better one, I think. It might be a carp. No, there's a nice one right here, guys. Look at this one. Now this lake has got so many carp in it that every time I get a fish that has any size to them, yeah, that's a nice one there, guys. Look at this one. Get in. Up, oh, easy buddy, easy buddy, easy buddy. Come on in, there we go. There's a nice one, guys. That's what we're looking for here. And he swallowed that pro swim shad. Look at that. Look at the shoulders on that fish, guys. Tell me that's not a fat, fat, fat fish. And there's my swim shad somewhere down in there. <laughs> we're talking about my fancy fishing tackle. That's why, that, those bites are somewhat subtle. You cannot have more fun than this. Finesse fishing uh, for me, for walleyes and stuff is, is where it's all at, and we're definitely gonna box that one. That one will make 15 inches, no problem. <laughs> now, I, I feel like that as we work along here, a lot of these fish are just gonna be scattered. Uh, working on Anytime you're working on sand flats, I think you run into little pockets of fish. Um, you'll get one or two bites in a row, or three bites in a row real quick, and then you'll go for a little stretch with no bites, and you'll get several bites in a row, and then no bites, and you'd think, oh, maybe there's something on the bottom right there. And I don't really think that's what it is. I think they're just ro roaming in small schools along a sand flat and you know, looking to intercept bait fish. This water's extremely stained. There's no visibility. That's why all the colors, whether I'm throwing the flicker shad or the swim shad here, and the, this is in white, that's in white with chartreuse back, my gulp minnows in fire tiger my grubs in black, all the colors that uh, will stand out in the, in the stained water here. All right, there's another one, the flicker shad. Now that's something I'm gonna have to keep careful of. The two that I've caught now on the flicker shad, both have bit that thing right when I go to reel it up. So I'm speeding it up and it's coming up and off the bottom and that's when they're biting this thing. And again, look how fat these fish are. Holy schmoly, they are fat, fat, fat. Now if that one's 15 inches and he's gonna be close, we're gonna check that one. No, he's not gonna make it. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, I don't know what we got this time. That was a weird bite, guys, because I threw it and it, just, it didn't sink, but it didn't move anywhere. It's another nice one. That was a strange bite, guys. I am not lying. That was a strange bite. 
he, uh, I threw it out there and it, and it didn't move. The bait didn't sink, it didn't, it didn't swim, it just stopped. <laughs> and, uh, and I wasn't sure what was going on with that, but there's my gold minnow getting her done. And that's a keeper there, guys. We'll eat that one, I bet you. All right, got him out. We're gonna chuck him on the board here real quick and see how he goes. I don't know if that one's gonna make it. He's gonna be close. One way or the, oh yeah, he's perfect. 16 inches, they gotta be 15 to 21. There's a perfect eating one right there. That's number two for the box. And we're gonna keep a few for the camp chef. And I promise you, we will make them tasty. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. All right, back to the minnow. And I'm just mixing it up, guys, to see which one will be, uh, will be the most effective. So far, we've been bit on the gulp minnow. We've been bit on the power bait swim, pro swim shad. We've been bit on the flicker shad. We've been bit on the grub. And we've been bit on the minnow. Uh, so we're just going to keep mixing it up and seeing how that goes. <laughs> There's another one right here. We're going to put together a five fish limit in a hurry, guys. And we'd rather keep fish on the small end of the slot just because that's my MO in general as far as selective harvest goes. So I'm fishing the gulp minnow on my standard um, gulp minnow setup, the 610 medium light extra fast legend extreme rods and six pound trying 100% fluorocarbon XL. And then the new Revo rocket spinning reel. It's a brand new reel. Um, it's got a seven to one gear ratio on it. Well, and so it retrieves line very, very quickly, which for a spinning reel can be a really great thing. Anytime you can get line back, it's not about how fast can I retrieve baits, it's about how fast can I get tight on fish. <laughs> and apparently I can get tight on them just fine. <laughs> and I'll take it uh, for middle of the afternoon, or middle of the morning, I should say middle of the day. There's another one on the little bright colored minnow. And that little dog will hunt. When you get around stained water right there, that little fire tiger minnow, that's about as obnoxious of a color as you can get. A little three inch gold minnow on an eight ounce jig head is a very good way to catch fish, all kinds of fish. I can't even tell you how many species I'm up to, but it includes tarpon and shark and every kind of snook and redfish and sea trout and flounder and snapper you can imagine. If it swims in fresh water, I've caught them on it. Uh, I can tell you that uh, for sure. There's a better one here, guys, I believe. Hard to tell, we're catching a lot of them and some of them are more ambitious than others. Uh, pretty good walleye bite we got going or saw guy bite we got going right here, guys. Come on, buddy, come on over here. <laughs> That's a little guy. Oh man, I'll tell you what. There's the bright jig again. Look at the color of the water. That's why, and if that fish will disappear. You can see that jig, if you watch it under the surface of the water, once it goes under a foot, you can't even see it. Right under the boat. <laughs> oh man, that's funny because I thought I had a bite and I kind of was like, well, no, maybe not. I let the bait drop back down and then I thought I got a bite again and I was like, oh, maybe not. And I let the bait drop back down and then it was indeed a bite. And I'll check that one just in case. I'm not sure he's going to get there either, but we're going to check him. Since we are doing some grocery shopping and we're looking for fish as close to 15 inches as possible, that one will work. Now the minnow, unlike the pro shad, as you see here, I'm working the baits back and forth. The minnow, I'm doing a little short pop, just barely up off the bottom. Just pop it up and then let it go back to the bottom. And there, there's, oh, they're going in just like that. See, that, that's how you do it, guys. You just pop that minnow up and then you let it settle back down to the bottom. And that's why the fast reel, because as you saw, it was real high on the, on the rod and the super fast reel gets me back to it in a hurry. Now that's a little tiny one. And I want to point something out. Even with that real fast reel and the real sensitive rod, that fish still got all that bait and then some. <laughs> oh buddy, that is good fun right there, guys. To be able to catch a whole bunch of fish in a row and rotate, there's a nice one here. This would be a good keeper right here. We'll eat this one for sure. We'll get this thing ready. I think so anyway. He's looking like he's going to be 15 and then some. Come on in here, buddy. Yeah, that's going to be a perfect eater right there. 
Nice, nice, a whole fray bill full of eating size saga. I'll take that all day long. This flicker shad is that it's very much a finesse crankbait. It's by far the most finesse crankbait. It's the only crankbait that I ever throw on spinning rods. I don't throw any other crankbaits on spinning tackle. They're always in the hunt. It's not like a real wide wobbling bait that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. It's a good cold water bait. It's a good warm water bait. It's a, it's a good bait in shad based lakes. In general, it's an excellent trolling bait, or you can just cast it and just catch them with it like this. That's that's kind of what I'm gonna do right here. Now, this might be a good one here. I also think that as opposed to the soft baits, if you can get, uh, not, he's not any bigger than the mothers. If you can get them to go on something like a hard bait, a lot of times you can catch larger than average fish because it puts a, a bigger signature in the water. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. The thing to keep in mind about finesse fishing, you know, we're fishing in the middle of the day, hot, calm, 90 degree day in summertime, trying to catch walleyes. That's a finesse thing. Well, the, the whole key to that is when you're gonna go finesse fishing is keeping a whole mindset. Finesse fishing is a mindset, it's not just tackle. It's a mindset, it's about subtle retrieves, it's about a loose grip on your rod, it's about baits that are, that are subtle in their action, not necessarily their colors because we've got this bright water. So it may not be about the color of the bait, it may be more about the action of the bait you know, to make it a finesse style bait. When it comes to a place like Jackson Lake State Park, the, all the amenities are here. We can get information about it. You can go to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife's Park Finder site and get all kinds of information about the lake, full service boat ramps. Um, you know, you've got campgrounds, you've got all the hookups for campgrounds, you got bathroom facilities, you've got a good quality boat ramp. A lot of guys water ski and jet ski here. Oh, there was a little bump there. Uh, you know, from campers to sailboarders, paddleboarders, uh, a lot of people spend time here on this lake. But whether you're bringing an RV or a tent, a uh, fantastic place to bring kids. Uh, other species out here include uh, catfish. There are some bass in here, though not a big number of them. And then wipers. This lake's well known for its wiper population as well. Got that one. I'm okay, good, and he's right where that other one was. <laughs> and so maybe I'm not sure if I was hitting carp or not. I'm pretty sure that's a keeper there, though, just from the feel of him. <laughs> a gold mill. Oh, yeah, there's a real nice one here. That'll work just fine. All right, let me get around you real quick here. We'll get him right here. That one will work just fine. Come here, buddy. There we go. We'll eat that one. <laughs> Look at the body on that. Look at that, guys. That's how you know you got a big fat saw guy. Get out of there. Look at that belly. That's a fat one. These guys are well fed. Thank you, uh, Mandy, for making these. Mandy's biologist that makes these guys this fat. Got him. There we go. I had to slow that one down a whole bunch, and that might be a good one there, guys. Not really sure. Oh yeah, this might, I don't know what I got here. It's hard to tell. These guys, some of them are feistier than others. Yeah, there's been a good keeper right there. <laughs> there's a nice one. Come here, buddy. We're not gonna even net them at this point. We've netted so many of them that, get up in here, that'd be a good keeper one right there. That's a real nice one. And I noticed I slowed that retrieve down. We were rolling on that. I slowed the retrieve down a whole bunch because I went three casts in a row and didn't get anything. All right, there you go, guys. That's who did the heavy lifting right here. This guy caught the numbers. This guy caught the size, and this guy basically did the, the location services for us today. So a couple of eighth ounce jig heads and a, and a flicker shad right there, really, really consistent way to get fish done. Finesse fishing is a mindset. You know, subtle baits, um, subtle actions, very light rods, very light line, light, fast reels as well. It's a whole mindset, so keep that in mind. Finesse fishing is the way to get it done a lot of times in high bright sun and a glass calm day. So we appreciate you guys joining us today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We're gonna take these, uh, these fish home and clean them up and put them on the camp chef. It should be delicious.
This recipe is going to be for your best fish. This is for your freshest walleye, your beautiful piece of white bass, the fish that you just caught that's really good, really fresh, and really demands a simple treatment. These are white bass. Now these are, these are white bass that are brand new, fresh, perfectly filleted, and as you can see, no bones in them. These are ready to go. I've got the Camp Chef Pro 90 stove heating up right here with a cast iron skillet in it. Give it a little tiny bit of salt and pepper. I'm only actually going to season one side of it as well. And then we've got a little bit of olive oil in the pan there and it's getting hot and then I'm going to take a little chunk or actually a pretty aggressive chunk of butter and we're going to put that in the pan and I'm going to take these fish fillets and I'm going to lay them in here very carefully as soon as that little piece of butter is gone or gone enough real gently we're going to lay these in here with the seasoned side down we'll let those sit for about a minute and a half and then we'll go from there like I said we don't want to overpower them but just a tiny bit of seasoning on this side as well and a tiny little bit of seasoning on there key to it is don't get the pan too hot. We don't want to brown this fish. We're not trying to blacken it or something. I think these are ready to flip at this point gracefully. And as you can see, I didn't get a lot of color in it. I got just a little bit of color. Province herbs. I'm going to add it to the butter. I'm not adding it to the fish. And then what I'm going to do is tilt this pan to get some of this fish out, mix those herbs in it, and then I'm going to baste the fish with it. So you give it the final little base with a little bit of that butter. And like I said, we're not really going to eat all that butter. I'm going to leave all that in the pan. I'm going to turn it off and then we'll go ahead and pull it out. It's going to break just getting out of the pan. And we'll set it right here. And I got some lemon wedges ready to go right there. And then I'm immediately going to grab a lemon wedge, if I can get a hold of it, and hit it with a pretty good dose of lemon. This is really good stuff. So. Um, I appreciate you watching very much. If you want to join the conversation on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, we'd appreciate that. If you want information on the Camp Chef stuff, look them up as well, whether it be the Pro 90 stove, the cast iron skillet. If you want the recipe, go to our website. Most importantly, we hope you'll tune in, and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Burke. And you got to get hooks that power with it if you need it, just in case. <laughs> and he swallowed that Pro Swim Shad. Look at that. Look at the shoulders on that fish, guys. Tell me that's not a fat, fat, fat fish. And there's my swim shad somewhere down in there. Berkeley, catch more fish. Uh, very, excuse me, uh, uh, not. <laughs> what did I just say? There's one. Nope, oh, missed that one. It's in this one. Oh, there was a shad for sure. There's one. Oh, golly. Oh, see, those are shad. I think they're carp right here. Nope. Oh, I missed him. Cut for a second. Cut, cut all that. I brought this. Let me try it one more time. <laughs>